Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. Once again, we will be discussing the Wings of Fire family tree. We are heading into Book 4, The Dark Secret. We will continue our existing trees while making new ones. Here are the rules. On the board, we have biological families, found families, and romantic relationships. Because this is a family tree, we will not include Hu Hei too. This is because it will make the trees illegible. Review the series to get caught up. In the prologue, Reed's troop is patrolling with a Sandwing General. There, we see them get attacked by Ice Wings who spontaneously appear from a forest. The troops fight until the Sandwing General yells for a retreat. Reed and his siblings make it out of battle, luckily without any lethal casualties. We get some character development with each sibling as they wish for the war to end. In Act 1, we are met with Starflight in a dreamlike sequence. He recounts the events up until now, from his time under the mountain, to him being captured by the Nightwings. We hear Nightwings talking amongst each other. Eventually, one of them splashes Starflight awake. Starflight realizes that he's been transported to the Nightwing Kingdom. He meets a few Nightwings. These Nightwings are Fierce Teeth, Mighty Claws, and Mind Reader. Fierce Teeth, the aggressive one, is Starflight's older sister. Mighty Claws also mentions that he has a sister as well. No names are given for their parents. The Nightwings converse with Starflight until Morrisseer arrives. It appears that Starflight has been summoned by the Queen. We learn that Starflight is in the Nightwing Kingdom to give any information about the Rainwings. More importantly, they are worried about the threat of invasion. He is tossed onto a platform while several Nightwings surround him. This happens to be a Nightwing meeting. It's unclear of who is important among the crowd. In fact, we don't even see the Queen in the room with them. Queen Battle Winner is actually behind a rock screen with holes plucked out so she can see her subjects. Princess Greatness, her daughter, speaks for her. Starflight is interrogated further about what the Rainwings know about the Nightwing Kingdom. This stirs up some worry among each dragon, prompting them to ask when the Rainwings will decide to attack. Starflight confirms her suspicions about the Rainwings planning an attack on the Kingdom, but does not know when the invasion will come. Afterwards, another Nightwing joins the meeting unprompted. This Nightwing is Vengeance, the dragon who has venom scars on his face. The same dragon who imprisoned Glory. He enters the chamber, revealing that he captured Queen Splendor. Suddenly, Deathbringer is brought into question. Eyewitnesses claim that Deathbringer aided in the escape of Glory. Usually, conspiring with the enemy is a crime punishable by death. But because Deathbringer is Greatness's assassin, she sends him to the dungeon to review his allegiance. Unfortunately, Vengeance is not so lucky. Because he was responsible for the capture of Glory, despite being told not to return to the rainforest, he was executed. Then, Greatness instructs everyone to develop offensive and defensive tactics against the Rainwings. Morrisir decides to take Starflight hunting where we learn quite a few things. Originally, Starflight believed that Morrisir or Vengeance would be his father, but that's not the case at all. We find out that Starflight's father is named Mastermind. Apparently, he has the same mannerisms as his son. Morrisir brings Starflight to meet his father in the laboratory. On the way, we meet Fate Speaker, who we find is another Sunny. She's very positive and charismatic, despite her situation being dire. Starflight arrives at Mastermind's laboratory, where Morrisir mentions the name of Starflight's mother. Her name is Farsight, who happened to be killed a couple of weeks ago. Mastermind comments on how several Nightwings don't have children. He brings up Morrisir in conversation, asking if he had children of his own. Morrisir neither confirms or denies, leaving us in the dark. Strong Wings is also introduced. He had ridiculed Mastermind for believing that Starflight was his son. We also find out that Strong Wings is Mastermind's assistant. Before Starflight becomes more intertwined with his father, he discovers that Mastermind has been conducting experiments on Rainwings. Starflight despises how his father treated the captured Rainwings, having them chained up and limit testing them. Using context clues, Starflight realizes that they've been studying Rainwings because they wanted to take the rainforest for themselves. In Act 2, Starflight meets the rest of the alternate Dragonets of Destiny. They aren't a very friendly bunch, besides Fate Speaker. Suddenly, Morrisir gives an order to kill Starflight. The alternates rush after him with readied claws. Fortunately, Starflight is nimble and quick thinking, using the air vents to cover his movements. He escapes towards the Rainwing prison where he meets a guard. She asks why Starflight is down in the caverns, especially near the Rainwing prison. Starflight says it's for a school project, which somehow allows him passage. It turns out that the guard has a daughter who also does fail to study for Mastermind. Unfortunately, none of their names are revealed. Honestly, it made me want to name them myself, but maybe they get a name later in the series. 
I'll never know. Anyways, the alternates fail to kill Starflight. Fate Speaker finds him in prison, but promises to keep him alive. After some antics with a Rainwing, the pair return to Marusir. He puts the pair and the alternates into the Nightwing dormitory. We get another dream sequence of Starflight and Sunny reading a scroll, which is taken away by Kestrel. Later in the night, Fate Speaker wakes up Starflight to go explore around the Nightwing Kingdom. There they find some forest ruins. Inside, they find a treasure room which housed two dead Nightwings. That's not the only thing in the room, though. Starflight finds a dream visitor among the deceased dragons. By the time Starflight and Fate Speaker return to the dormitory, he uses the dream visitor to contact his friends. Starflight is able to make contact with Kinkajou first to test the dream visitor. Just as she's about to wake up, Starflight chooses to interact with Sunny. In her dream, she's having a conversation with Glory and Tsunami. She believes that Starflight defected to the Nightwings, when in reality he was captured. Tsunami interjects, noting that Starflight could not have been brave enough to make that decision himself. Before anyone notices the Dream Visitor, Starflight tucks it away. That's when Morrisier appears, claiming to have another test for him and the alternates. They fly off to a distant land which happens to be the Claw of the Clouds Mountains, Skywing territory. The group reaches a secluded Skywing outpost. Here, Morrisier wants the alternates and Starflight to convince Burn's troops to switch sides to Blister. When they enter the outpost, the Skywings are outraged by the idea of switching their allegiance to Blister. In fact, one of the Skywing soldiers had a brother who was killed by Blister herself. They end up calming down, however, as Starflight gives off a diplomatic speech about how the war will end and they'll all return to their families. That's when Morrisier sends the Nightwings to kill them all. Before returning to the Nightwing Island, Squid complains about being part of the prophecy and being treated unfairly. This prompts Morrisier to threaten Squid, making him choose to fly into Skywing territory or have him killed on the spot. Squid ultimately chooses to go back to the mainland. The remaining alternates, Morrisier and Starflight, return to the Nightwing Island where Dragonets are sent to the dormitory again. Before they rest, Fate Speaker urges Starflight to seek a private audience with the Queen, where both of them will talk about Morrisier's actions. After Starflight's short rest, he is woken up by Fate Speaker, who saw a flame run out of the dorms. The pair follow the Skywing to the dungeons, where they meet Deathbringer again. Splendor is also in a nearby cage, but the Dragonets were there for the assassin. After that conversation, Starflight and Fate Speaker still want to meet the Queen, so they attempt to go to the throne room. Soon they realize that the throne room doesn't exist behind a door, so the pair try to find an alternative way in. They discover a hole behind the map of the continent, denoted by the Nightwings. Fate Speaker and Starflight crawl through the tunnel and end up in a small room with a lava cauldron in the center. Suddenly, Queen Battlewinner emerges from the lava, scaring the pair. We find out that Queen Battlewinner's insides were blasted by Frostbreath. Submerging herself in lava puts her in a state between life and death. Here we learn Queen Battlewinner's motives. She wants to save her tribe and will sacrifice other tribes to do so. The pair end up returning to the dormitory where Starflight uses the Dream Visitor to meet his friends again. This time, he's able to talk to Sunny, Tsunami, Clay, and finally Glory. Glory is the only dragon who is able to reach out to Starflight, noticing him as soon as he appears in her dream. She realizes that Starflight found a dream visitor, and they recount the events that occur until now. Starflight also lets Glory know that Morrisier has plans to kidnap Tsunami. This plan was revealed when Squid left the group. By the time it's morning, Morrisier gets the dragoness to do battle training. Battle ensues between Ochre and Flame first. After a short brawl, Ochre is taken out of the fight and Fate Speaker is put in. The enthusiasm from Viper gets her in the fight as well, both her and Flame having to fight Fate Speaker. Suddenly, Starflight comes in to protect his Nightwing friend. As Viper readies her tail to attack, she accidentally hits Flame's eye as she trips and falls into lava. Before she is completely burned to death, Starflight wants Ochre to jump into the lava to save her. The thing is, Ochre wasn't born in a blood red egg, nor was he born on the brightest night. The same can be said for Flame. Starflight believes that Morrisier is trying to rewrite the prophecy entirely. While that revelation occurs, Fate Speaker is incredibly sad about losing Viper and Squid, despite the way they were treating her. Flame is taken away to the infirmary while the rest of the Dragonettes return to their sleeping quarters. As Fate Speaker sleeps soundly on her bed, Starflight is woken up by his father. Despite his desire to not be affiliated with Mastermind, Starflight follows his father into the library in search of Sandwing Venom cures. Suddenly, a group of Nightwings appear telling Mastermind that the capture of Tsunami failed. One of the failed captors is named Wisdom. If you've watched the full series, you know what's coming. It's skipping time, because we don't have much family development coming up. The Queen decides that Nightwings will attack the Rainforest tonight. Starflight tries to find the Dream Visitor to contact his friends. The Dream Visitor isn't found, so he wakes up Fate Speaker to make an alternate plan. 
The pair use flame to get into the rainforest. The real Dragonets of Destiny reunite. Sunny and Fate Speaker made Starflight rethink who he has a crush on. Battle planning ensues. And Starflight finally confesses to Sunny. The Rainwings attack the Nightwings first. They use sleep darts and camouflage when they enter the tunnel. Starflight leads Glory to the Rainwing prisons, where Mangrove reunites with Orchid. After freeing the Rainwings, the Nightwing pair and Glory go to have a diplomatic meeting with Queen Battlewinner. On the way to her room, they meet Greatness who is threatened by Glory when she appears from thin air. The Quartet make their way into Queen Battlewinner's room where they see Mastermind trying to fit armor onto her. Glory tries to convince Queen Battlewinner to stop their invasion among other peaceful demands, but she ultimately declines. Starflight suggests something rather far-fetched. Because the Nightwing Island is basically inhabitable, and their queen cannot make it off the island mortally, he suggests that the Nightwings should accept Glory as their new queen. Outraged by this idea, Queen Battlewinner attempts to kill Glory by climbing out of her cauldron and killing her. Unfortunately for Battlewinner, she climbs out of the lava and freezes to death from the residual ice breath. With that, the Nightwing Queen is dead, and the Nightwings begin their escape from the volcanic island. With the island's volcano about to erupt, every Nightwing swears their allegiance to Glory and marches through the portal. Other notable characters like Ochre and Mastermind go through the portal. Feeling guilty of his actions, Mastermind hesitantly moves through with the crowd. The Dragonettes of Destiny meet Marseer, who they believe shouldn't move through with the Nightwings. This is when he reveals that the entire prophecy was written by him. The entire prophecy was fake. The Dragonettes besides Glory hear this revelation, and Sunny ends up running away sobbing. The volcano finally erupts, taking Marseer's life while the trio fly away. Unfortunately, Starflight is blinded by volcanic burns. He is placed onto the rainforest floor and Fate Speaker rushes over to him. With his eyes closed, he feels the warmth of Sunny, but it's actually Fate Speaker who stays by his side. In the epilogue, each of the three sisters have a perspective to share. Queen Glacier and Blaze want to see the Dragonets of Destiny for themselves. We also have Blister talking to Nautilus. She exclaims that she wants to kill the Dragonets. Squid also appears, complaining about his experiences with Morseer. Finally, we have Burn and her brother Smolder. Smolder happens to be the dragon described in the tapestry in Blaze's stronghold, the one with the forbidden love. Burn also has plans to murder the dragonettes. It also turns out that they have Queen Scarlet in their possession. And that's it for Book 4, The Dark Secret. Before I go on my short rant, I just want to thank everyone who's been supporting me uh, throughout the series. It's been really <laughs> uh, inspiring for me to continue. So we're nearing the end of Arc 1 which is really interesting because then it's making me ask questions to myself about do I want to do Arc 2? Um, do I want to continue with Arc 3? Because I've read all the books, but um, I don't remember if their family trees are as intricate as book 1's. I was really excited making this episode because Starflight is probably one of my favorite characters, mainly because of how inquisitive he is. I aspire to be like him in terms of his uh, thirst for knowledge, so... Yeah, it was. I really liked doing this video for him. I hope everyone enjoyed, and as always, thanks for listening.